हेलो फ्रेंड्स एंड वेलकम टू लेसन नंबर सिक्स वी आर स्टडिंग इंडियन एग्रीकल्चर इन दिस लेसन एंड दिस इज़ द एटीन वीडियो ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर टॉपिक इन दिस पर्टिकुलर वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी अबाउट द मेजर गवर्नमेंट प्रोग्राम्स फॉर इरीगेशन एंड वाटर यूज एफिशेंसी इन आर कंट्री ओके सो द फर्स्ट स्कीम दैट वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट इज प्रधानमंत्री कृषि सिंचाई योजना दिस स्कीम वॉज लॉन्च इन टू थाउजेंड एंड फिफ्टीन इट इज़ बेसिकली एन इंटीग्रेटेड अप्रोच विद कंपोनेंट्स लाइक ए आई बी पी हर खेत को पानी एंड माइक्रो इरीगेशन प्रमोशन सो देर आर थ्री मेन कंपोनेंट्स हीयर वन इज ए आई बी पी विच इज एक्सेलरेटेड इरीगेशन बेनिफिट्स प्रोग्राम ओके देन हर खेत को पानी मीनिंग गिविंग वाटर और इरीगेशन फैसिलिटी टू एवरी फार्म एंड माइक्रो इरीगेशन प्रमोशन मीनिंग प्रमोटिंग Uh, irrigation techniques like drip irrigation and sprinkler irrigation which we have seen in the previous video also and more crop per drop is the basic ethos on which this scheme works basically to increase the water use efficiency so having more crop yield per unit of water consumed so this is basically the fundamental principle behind pradhan mantri krishi sinchai yojana okay uh, now what are the uh, you know benefits of this scheme it encourages uh you know convergence among ministries for holistic water management so various ministries and departments of the government like irrigation department agriculture department panchayati raj rural development they converge together work together for holistic development for of water management okay so uh, this is very very important point however there are some drawbacks also of this scheme what are the drawbacks there are fund constraints slow implementation of projects so although this is a very good scheme for uh, you know providing irrigation to every farm for promoting micro irrigation techniques but obviously there are fund constraints there are budget constraints and also implementation of project is slow okay because of various reasons on the field weak operation and maintenance onm of irrigation infrastructure is another problem which is faced under this scheme okay so this is the challenge that we are facing then the next uh, scheme or program of the government that we are going to talk about is the ltif which is long term irrigation fund we had briefly mentioned about this in the previous video also this was launched in 2016 it is basically a 40000 crore corpus funds uh, which supports large projects example canals dams basically and also micro irrigation so it accelerates completion of delayed schemes so wherever the projects are getting delayed so it needs some extra funding so that is done through this ltif project delays due to land acquisition and environmental clearances uh, states lack capacity to absorb funds efficiently uh, efficiently so this is some of the drawbacks of this particular uh, program okay then the next uh, program is the pm kusum uh, it promotes solar pumps reducing energy cost for irrigation okay so instead of using the traditional energy electricity it promotes solar pumps okay and this was launched in 2019 it supports green energy and reduces carbon footprint okay so uh, this is the benefit of this particular scheme however there is limited farmer awareness about this scheme and inadequate technical support also in the rural areas on the ground level for installation and maintenance so this is one very major problem then the next one is the atal bhujal yojana again of 2019 and uh, so the name itself suggests that it is related to groundwater bhujal it is a community driven groundwater management program in seven water stressed states okay so launched in seven states where there is water stress it encourages local participation basically it is community driven meaning people will take initiative uh, so we give them from the government some help uh okay some kind of training some awareness and local participation is very very important in this uh however there is a drawback it lacks robust real time monitoring and enforcement mechanism to enhance compliance and to prevent over extraction so these are some of the drawbacks of this program then the next one is the mission kakatiya 2015 of telangana state again we have seen this basically restored 46000 tanks in telangana raising groundwater levels by 6 to 9% so what they do is they rejuvenate and restore tanks okay already existing tanks and the silt which is which comes out of that uh, tank after desiltation is used as fertilizer because it is rich in nutrient 
However, the problem is that there is limited GIS based monitoring for replication in other states and scaling up requires significant investment. Okay, so this all this dissertation and all these activities are a little costly. So it needs significant investment. So these are some of the challenges which uh, which we might face in implementation of this project. However, a very, very good scheme of the Telangana government. Then what is the future of irrigation in India? What are the various challenges and solutions? Challenges meaning going ahead. What further challenges can we face in irrigation? So the first one is the groundwater depletion. This is already going on, but in future we will face this challenge even more. So there is over extraction. Example, Haryana 136% is the extraction rate. It threatens long term water availability. Okay, and already there are water stressed areas in Punjab. 14 districts have been uh, declared critically affected, right? So, uh, you know, that is a major problem. Then the next problem, problem number two or challenge number two is inequitable access. Not everybody is getting the irrigation facility, uh, you know, equitably. Small and marginal farmers often lack access to modern irrigation systems. So again, see, 80, more than 80% of our farmers are small and marginal farmers and they are not getting benefit out of this because of small, uh, you know, farm size, their ability to pay, ability to invest, all those are limited. So that is a major constraint here. Okay, so selection uh, bias is there when, when it comes to, uh, you know, selecting the beneficiaries of these schemes. Of course, there are infrastructure gaps in our country, poor maintenance of first mile canals and weak operation and maintenance O&M systems reduce efficiency. Efficiency of the existing uh, systems is also, um, you know, a matter of uh, concern for us. Then the next one is low micro irrigation adoption. Only 20% of potential area under drip and sprinkler system. This we had seen previously that, you know, only 10 to 15 million hectare they have been covered, but the potential is much more, maybe around 70 million hectare uh, can be covered under this. Then climate unpredictability, another problem, erratic monsoons, frequent droughts require climate resilient irrigation system. So we need to develop such technologies, such systems which will be resilient to these vagaries of climate. Okay. So what are some of the potential solutions to these challenges? Let us study that. So uh, the first one is smart irrigation. So what is smart irrigation? Use of sensors. Okay. ISARC sensors, which is already, uh, you know, tried in UP for precision water delivery, internet of things, AI drone systems for real time monitoring and soil moisture and crop needs. Okay. So again, these are some modern technologies which can be used for irrigation. However, again, the implementation adoption is very, very limited because of several constraints that we have seen previously also. Okay. Then energy water convergence, uh, expand PM Kusum to promote solar powered irrigation, solarized canals to generate energy and reduce the operation losses. So again, use of solar energy, renewable energy, uh, which can be further encouraged and promoted in our country. Again, there are various challenges, but this is a potential solution and going ahead in future, this, uh, these solutions will be, will become necessity actually. Okay. Then we need to do a lot of recharge interventions also so that how the groundwater recharges. So we have to revive rivers, tanks, example in UP, river rejuvenation, Telangana mission, Kakatiya, basically to rejuvenate our existing irrigation systems, promote check dams and percolation tanks for groundwater recharge. Okay. So rainwater harvesting structures need to be promoted at a very, very large scale. Some policy tweaks also need to be done, meaning a little tweaks, meaning little changes. Okay. So the word tweak means little changes that we need to do, not major changes, little changes. One is introduce water pricing and volumetric billing to discourage wastage. Okay. So that if people start paying, then you know, they will not over extract, promote crop diversification to reduce water intensive crops like paddy. Again, you know, uh, very basic solution but very very challenging to implement because it is very difficult to convince a farmer to sh to switch from paddy or wheat to any other crop okay because for paddy or wheat there is msp right msp is given by the government and also government procurement is done for these crops so farmers have an assured income or assured price for this particular uh, crops okay and for others although msps may be declared but government does not do procurement itself so the open market forces will determine the actual price 
and we never know um, you know and the farmers never know actually whether they will get remunerative prices or not so again very very major challenge but crop diversification needs to be done that is the future implement real time groundwater metering to monitor extraction so uh, again you know we need to do this to monitor the groundwater extraction there need there need to be some institutional reforms also so basically these are uh, something at the institutional level like strengthen the farmer water use user associations for community driven irrigation management so you know there are jal sathis and you know uh, this kind of organizations uh, in village level uh, at the gram panchayat level also so uh, uh, pani panchayats these institutions need to be strengthened given more power so that they can manage the water well improve operation and maintenance through participatory models again very very important then obviously we need to engage the private sector also the government alone cannot do all the work so how private sector can help we need to encourage public private partnership ppp for solar lift irrigation and micro irrigation services involve private firms in technology dissemination and maintenance okay so private firms can bring in their technology help in dissemination help in operation and maintenance and give their services okay so that the government can do that project in partnership with these organizations and the last one is obviously we need to have you know r and d innovation in these areas so that the water use efficiency increases and you know um, uh, you know we the the precision of water use also increases that is very very important so we need to develop sensor guided irrigation for precise water use okay so water uh, you know use precision is very very important precision meaning water going exactly to the point where it is needed okay for example if it is needed in the roots then it will be supplied to the roots if it is needed somewhere okay uh, you know uh, somewhere near the shoot of the plant or the leaves you know so that kind of irrigation those kind of techniques need to be developed so that is precision water use use remote sensing and block level climate modeling for tailored irrigation schedule so again you know these are possible with ai blockchain technologies okay and uh, you know remote sensing satellites all these things this technologies are available only thing is we need to tailor them for irrigation uh, purposes okay so this is about various government schemes what are the challenges what are the solutions proposed solutions basically the technological solutions that we have seen uh, so this can be useful to you while uh, you know answer writing also from the next video onwards we'll continue discussing about agriculture only but that is related to agriculture policy so the next video or the next lesson will be on agriculture sector policy where we'll study topics like msp pds okay food security and uh, you know uh, many other uh, topics from the uh, policy point of view related to agriculture so see you in the next video thank you